What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are going to get into 7 issues of Detective Comics. This is a line that I have been meaning to catch up with for some time now, but they have been releasing one issue a week. So I really haven't had the opportunity to get completely cut up. The last we left off, we were in Fear State, or we were at the end of Fear State, and starting a brand new story arc that has to do with Arkham Tower. If you're looking to get completely caught up on everything going on with Detective Comics and Batman, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything that happened in Fear State. And so, to kick off our 7 issue video, we are starting with issue 1. 1046 and going all the way to 1052. Our first issue it is going to be dropping us in the aftermath of Fear State. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this first issue, issue 1046, we are picking up after Fear State has finally come to its conclusion. But this is Gotham City, so even though the, the war, the catastrophe, it was completely avoided, that does not mean that there is not villainous people out there doing horrendous things. And that's what picks us up with Anna Avulsion. An oracle, she is currently picking up signals, letting her know that there has been a silent alarm tripped somewhere in downtown Gotham. And we know that Anna is responsible. Seeing her slay multiple guards, with one of them running up the stairs. She is a complete psychopath, singing all the way as she chases this guy down. Not really understanding what her goal was, or what the purpose of any of this is. From the outside, we see the building explode. With shrapnel and debris flying through the air, we see Batman coming in, saving the day, protecting a woman and her young child. And so, with Batman on the outside, trying to save as many people as possible, down in the parking garage, that is where we find Avulsion. With her hopping into her sports car and trying to get out of here before being caught, she is met head-to-head -head with Spoiler. Unfortunately for Spoiler, she doesn't have a car, and Anna has no problem trying to run her down. And so with Miss Avulsion making her getaway, Spoiler goes to chase after her only for a vehicle right next to her to go completely up in flames. With Anna believing that she has gotten away from the situation, that is when her tire gets wrapped up by Batman's grappling hook. Bringing her car to a dead stop, watching it flip through the air, Batman has caught her. With her hoping that it was Batwoman coming to arrest her, a little bit disappointed that it is in fact Batman arresting her. And with her laughing and grinning, saying that she killed so many people before he was able to get on scene. Now with her primarily being a Batwoman villain, Batwoman and Oracle, they are sitting down having a conversation, trying to figure out how the heck she got out of prison. Previously being found guilty of murder, she had been sentenced and thrown into jail. But for some reason, her case had been revisited. And the only real lead they have is some anonymous donor had paid for a really good lawyer to get her out of prison. But for the time being, now with her rearrested and having new charges held against her, she is headed up to Blackgate, at least for the time being. But ultimately, she is going to end up at the new Arkham Tower, with the mayor going ahead and green lighting a trial run for the Arkham Tower. Everyone right now, they're a little bit skeptical on what this means, not really knowing the people behind it, finding out who the doctors are going to be, so on and so forth. They begin to do their investigation into the tower. 
Now, taking us over to Huntress and Spoiler. Right now, Huntress, she's still been getting visions of people doing violent acts. And for those remembering, Hugh Vile, aka the Parasite, he is the reason that she has been getting all of these visions. Believing that when Hugh Vile had died, all of these visions would go away. But for some reason, Huntress, she continues to see people doing violent acts all over the city. Not really understanding what is going on. The only thing she knows what to do is to go out and stop these violent people from doing these acts. And that's where we pick up with Batwoman and Deb Donovan. She is a reporter, the one reporter that the Bat family trusts more than anybody else. And that is because she is a no-nonsense reporter who gets down to the nitty-gritty facts. And what Batwoman is trying to do here is trying to build some kind of communication Moreover, so they can figure out what Arkham Tower is. Because both of them are highly skeptical with them having very limited information on anybody working there. It seems to be head up by two people. A Dr. Ocean and a Dr. Tobias Ware. With their biggest obstacle being that they cannot find any information on what these guys did, their history, so on and so forth. And so by all accounts, this is looking like a very sketchy situation right off the jump. But that's where we pick back up with Spoiler and Huntress. And right now, they're just discussing what's been going on with Huntress. Because as it stands, Batman hasn't been getting these visions. But he was also infected by the Parasite. And so no one really knows what this means right now. The only thing she does know is that she can see violent people doing violent acts as if she were doing these acts herself. And with Huntress heading off and going home for the night, that is where we pick up with Batman. And he is on a rooftop and he is meeting with Dr. Chase Meridian. And some of you, they're going to be familiar with that name. She has been sprinkled in throughout the comics, but originally she is coming from Batman Forever. And Batman is working with her, trying to figure out more about Arkham Tower himself. And that is because the mayor has brought her in and she is going to be the eyes and ears for the mayor while inside of Arkham Tower. While well, she investigates Arkham Tower, trying to ensure that the facility is completely legitimate, Batman also wants her to be his eyes and ears. To report to him if anything seems suspicious, saying that he needs to get out of Gotham City. That he has to get away from all of this craziness, especially after everything that transpired in Fear State. But Batman does believe, if this tower is legitimate, that it could be a new beginning for Gotham City. A chance for the people of this city to get real, legitimate help. A possibility to heal some of the darkest and most violent criminals. But in the other hand, it has the possibility of being one of the darkest nights. And that is where we pick up with issue 1047. With Batman leaving the city, we are picking up seven days into Arkham Tower being open. And right now, Dr. Tobias Ware, he is doing a press conference. And he seems to be a great public speaker. Someone that knows exactly what to say. It is still highly up to debate on whether he means everything he says or not. But what he is letting us know is that Arkham Asylum, it was always going to be a failure. The place was never meant to truly help people and it was manipulated in every single way in every single manner. That Arkham Asylum had turned into nothing more than a nightmare. But Dr. Ware is here to let everybody know that this, this is the future. Building Arkham Tower directly in the heart of Gotham City. And since opening a week ago, they have set their goals on commitment. Saying that they prefer treatment over punishment. Holistic, humane, and most of all, he says that it is effective. All of it is made possible but what he calls medical breakthroughs. Something that their predecessors never thought possible. And with Deb Donovan in the crowd, she has to ask the question, what are these medical breakthroughs? Because their paper, they have requested what pharmaceuticals they have been using and they have gotten nothing back in return. With Dr. Tobias saying that this must have been just an overlook 
and then he will get those that list to her immediately. And so by all accounts, he really is avoiding the question altogether. He is acting like Arkham Tower has really saved everything by their medical breakthroughs. Not giving us any kind of list of medications or pharmaceutical drugs that they are using, but he does give a demonstration. And that is where we see Nero come out. Now Nero, last we saw him, he tried to kill the mayor, proclaiming himself King of Gotham City. Of course, he got taken down, and he got brought to Arkham Tower. And as Dr. Ware takes off his handcuffs, asks him how he is feeling today, he says that he is feeling good, that he doesn't have hatred, he doesn't have anger. And though this completely shocks the crowd, by all accounts, whatever he is doing to heal these people, whatever treatment he is giving them, it seems to be working. And so as this speech comes to an end, we have the mayor and Dr. Meridian having a conversation because that is a little terrifying. Seeing someone like Nero, who literally was coming for your head, to see him in such a good mood, a good state, it's almost unbelievable. And while the two of them, they go back and forth on this conversation, we have Dr. Ware show up and saying that he knows transparency is going to be the best thing possible. That having Dr. Meridian on board to evaluate everything is exactly what he was hoping for. And to further that, he says he doesn't believe in medical miracles. That he only believes in something that is replicatable. And so Tobias Ware, the good doctor, seems to be someone legitimately interested in helping others. And sitting down with Deb Donovan and Batwoman, the two of them having a conversation. And Miss Donovan, right now, she is not convinced the Arkham Tower that Dr. Ware are legitimate. Because so far, they have seen no documentation, no peer-reviewed studies, nothing suggesting what kind of treatments that they are actually doing on these patients. She is a woman that believes in scientific research and so far, she has found none of it. Now, when it comes to Batwoman, she has been tracking the party crashers. And right now, pharmaceutical drugs, they are up on the streets. Currently not knowing where these drugs are coming from, they think there's a possibility somehow it could be connected to Arkham Tower. But inside of Arkham Tower, this is where we pick up with Anna Avulsion doing her arts and crafts, allowed to use scissors, allowed to use glue, and right now, she's not trying to murder anybody. In fact, nobody is trying to hurt anybody else. Everybody is calm. Everybody is docile. No one has that urge, that anger, that drive to go out and just stab somebody in the neck with those scissors. And so while everything just looks amazing on paper, and so while everything looks amazing on day 7, that is when we are taken to day 24. And on day 24, Arkham Tower has flames at the bottom of the tower, helicopters swirling around the top, GCPD, they have surrounded the bottom of the tower, and right now they are in communication with someone up in the tower, someone who has hostages, someone who has woken up, and now they are ready to show the world nightmares. And right now, Oracle is on the horn trying to get a hold of anybody inside of the tower. Because by all appearances, we have Steph inside, we have Nightwing inside, and possibly even Huntress is inside of this building. Unable to get communications with anybody. Right now, it's City Hall. The mayor, he is freaking out. Trying to figure out where Dr. Ware is. Trying to figure out what is going on. We see Anna Avulsion walking down the hallway, covered in blood, going on a serial killing rampage. And as she walks into a room with people giving out demands to GCPD, with Batwoman showing up to GCPD trying to figure out where she is able to help out, with GCPD not meeting some of their demands, with their time run out, this is where we see Dr. Tobias Ware, he is thrown out of a window. And in that window, we see Nero, we see Miss Avulsion, and some other villains. They have taken over Arkham Tower. And so as Batgirl and Batwoman, they sit outside the tower, wondering what their next course of action is. Having Nightwing, Spoiler, and Huntress inside this tower, 
not having any communications with any of them. Their concern right now is hoping that they are still alive. And this is when Nightwing gets in communication with Oracle, with him currently on the ninth floor. He had seen spoilers somewhere in the crowd, but when the alarms went off, he lost contact with her. And they have still yet to get contact with Huntress. Little do they know, right now she is bleeding out, and she is hiding inside of an elevator shaft. And that is what's going to take us to issue 1048. And picking up years ago, we are seeing a young Dr. Tobias Ware. And this young boy, what he saw was his mother attempting to kill him with a butcher knife. With her being arrested, with him going into foster care, the psychiatrist is just letting him know that this wasn't his fault, that his mother is very sick and she is going in, she's going to get some help. And so it seems, Dr. Tobias Ware, he understands full well the consequences of mental health issues, especially when they are left unchecked. With him going through this ordeal as a young child, it makes sense why he would want to do Arkham Tower. And so again, it is looking like Tobias Ware really is the good guy. And seeing him thrown out of a window on day 24, it is very possible that Dr. Tobias Ware, he had the greatest of intentions when creating this place. But somewhere along all of the criminal's treatment, something went wrong. Now, picking us up on day 12. We have Batwoman, she is going in for an interview to work at Arkham Tower. Sitting down with Dr. Tobias Ware, they have a great conversation, and then he starts to give her a tour of the facility, and letting her know as of day 12, they have 37 patients. And all of these patients, they are at least an 8 or higher, with a good majority of them coming from Arkham Asylum. After a day, after what had happened, the whole place got gassed, Many people had died, but those that survived, they ended up here at Arkham Tower. And so with them going over to the elevator, them going down to the basement, this is where we see a bunch of our villains. More specifically, we see Mr. Freeze front and center. And we know these villains. We know how horrific they can be. But right now, they are walking around the facility completely free to do whatever they want within the facility. And so whatever Tobias Ware is doing, it looks like he is truly helping these people. They're calmer, they're happier, they're in better moods. None of them are trying to seek domination or control or get revenge. As they continue to walk through this facility, they walk into one area, looking through the door, they see an individual who looks like she is pretending to be Harley Quinn. More of just a psychotic woman who is doing Harley Quinn cosplay, but also bombing some places. Luckily, no one was hurt in the incident. Continuing their tour, this is when they run into Anna Avulsion. And Batwoman seeing her, knowing how dangerous she is, seeing her in this state, seeing her calm down and completely relaxed. It really does blow her mind, not really understanding what treatment this is, him saying that they will save that for another day and another discussion. And so while it looks like he is doing incredible things, he still has been avoiding the question of what you are giving them to make them this docile, cheerful, happy state. But Tobias, he lets her know that he has every intention of expanding this facility to hold much more patience. That is, once they get the grant from the city, once the mayor signs over the check, then they will be able to expand this and have so many more patients under this care. And he doesn't want to limit this treatment to just people with criminal histories. He wants to prove that people that are the most violent can be healed from this therapy, meaning that people that are not violent criminals, ones that are just dealing with mental illness, there is a high probability that he can help them as well. But everything is depending on Dr. Chase Meridian's report, the report that she is going to be writing for the mayor. And with their conversation coming to an end, we see Dr. Meridian catching up to good old Dr. Tobias inside the lobby letting him know that there are a couple of patients that she would like to book some time with to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, and she seems to be running into some kind of roadblocks. 
with the doctor ensuring that he will make sure that time happens. We have Batwoman headed down to their new headquarters. In the sewer system in the newly reconstructed area, Oracle has set up shop here, and this is where they are doing their entire investigation into Arkham Tower. Now Batwoman, she lets it be known that this guy, Dr. Tobias, his story seems to be legitimate. He is a very compelling individual. One of the biggest issues right now is that no one has met or even talked to Dr. Ocean and still no communication with Batman, our Batgirls and Nightwing, they are all on their own when it comes down to figuring out Arkham Tower. And so as they study all of this information, we are thrown into the past, bringing us back to a young Tobias Ware, as he sits here waiting for the Wayne home for boys. He decides he's not going there. He heads off on his own. After stealing the doctor's wallet, all of her money, all of her cash, he heads out. He calls one of his friends. They order a pizza. They sit down. And in this conversation, they talk a little bit about his mom. And what we see is doc Dr. Tobias, he doesn't care for the mentally ill, especially the violently mentally ill, saying that they are nothing more than scum, that trying to heal people like her are a complete and absolute waste of time. And so it seems Dr. Tobias, well he puts on an amazing front, the truth is, he could care less about the mentally ill. And that is what's going to take us to issue 1049. And on day 14, we have Anna Avulsion. She is sitting down with Dr. Meridian. And they are talking about these kind of dream states she has been in lately. Seeing things as if it were a movie. Not really understanding what is going on. Her head it seems a little bit foggy. And so as Dr. Meridian goes to investigate this just a little bit further. This is where she runs into Batwoman. Her currently under an alias. And this is her first day of work. So with her being the new girl, her and Dr. Meridian, they sit down to have a conversation. And really, they're just talking about everything going on at Arkham Tower. And Dr. Meridian saying, by all accounts, it looks like this treatment is working. Not really sure who Dr. Ocean is yet. The one thing she can't deny is that whatever treatment they are giving these patients, it seems to be working very successfully. And with them going in their opposite directions, we have Batwoman, she heads into the arts and crafts section. Seeing all of these violent, mentally ill people using very sharp scissors and many other instruments, she's actually very surprised. Surprised that none of them have used these weapons on any of the guards, the nurses, or themselves. And as she greets some of these people, she sees one of them to be Siphon. Now she knows how dangerous this guy was. She knows how violent this guy was. And so to see them all in this state, it truly does, it just blows her mind. But while Anna is walking out of the room, an individual by the name of Mark comes up to her and seems to, seems to be harassing her. And so because of this, Batwoman catches up to them and tells the guy that he needs to beat it, to leave her alone. That he is nothing more than a janitor, and so he needs to keep himself in check and not mess with any of the patients. Now, this is where we pick up in Dr. Weir's office, and he is having a conversation with one of our party crashers, saying that these guys, their only job inside of this facility is to be picking up product. And so when Batwoman, aka Dr. Fro, she had caught up with this guy Mark, who happened to be a party crasher, she brought this information to Dr. Ware, seeing what he would do about it. And so he is just letting her know that if you guys continue to stir up issues with inside the facility, it is going to blow everybody's cover. Because his biggest concern is that the mayor is supposed to be signing over six million dollars to him and the facility. And so he needs to keep everything on the up and up until that happens. Because what, what Dr. Ware is doing is doing one of the biggest cons in Gotham City. He is trying to keep everything on the up and up. Make it look like the patients are good. Make it look like everyone is happy until he gets that six million dollars. In the meantime, he is running side hustles, selling drugs and products to the party crashers. But this gives Batgirl a lead. 
tracking this party crasher, going to see if she can find the HQ. Meanwhile, after hours, we have Batwoman. She is sneaking into the facility, into Arkham Tower, trying to find out any information that she can that may be kept secret from everyone else. But first and foremost, she goes in to talk to Huntress, because the Huntress has checked herself into this facility. With having all of these visions and all of these problems, hearing all of the good news about people actually being helped, she thought why not give it the opportunity and see if I can get some kind of treatment. Batwoman telling her that they need to leave before anybody catches them. She lets Batwoman know that she is not kept here a prisoner. She is not here against her will. She is choosing to be here because she truly does want some help. And if this offers up the opportunity to get that help, why not take it? But this is when the silent alarm goes off. No one really sure how the alarm had been tripped. It does not matter at this point because Batwoman, she needs to make her escape. With her getting out of here just in the nick of time, we head back to the cave. The new hideout for Oracle underneath Gotham City. And right now Nightwing, he's a little bit infuriated. And that is because they left Huntress behind saying that she needed to come regardless if she wanted to or not, that she could be there against her will and not even know it. But Batwoman tells him that she seemed happy, she seemed herself, and she seemed like she legitimately wanted to stay to get some help. The only thing we can actually do is keep tabs on the situation and be there if she does need help in the future. And this gets Nightwing thinking that what are they doing that Arkham Asylum wasn't? What makes the tower so vastly different? Because we all know Arkham Asylum, they were drugging patients by the freaking buttload. And so it can't be something as simple as just giving them pharmaceutical drugs. Now, while sitting inside of Arkham Tower, this is where Huntress, she begins to get visions of someone doing a violent act. With all of these visions stopping for the most part, something has happened that allowed these visions to come through. And the person she sees doing a violent act is Anna Avulsion. And right now, she is about to brutally murder Mark. With Mark not understanding what is going on, assuming that she just didn't take her medicine, she pulls out a shank and she goes and kills the guy. With the Huntress covering her ears, trying to block out all of the hate, all of the anger, all of the visions, whatever quiet that she once had, that is no longer there. And that is what's going to take us to issue 1050. And this is when we pick up in the early days, years ago, taking us back to when Huntress first came onto the scene. And when Nightwing had first met her, he wasn't really sure what to make of her. But the more he got to know her, the more he understood that she was a lot like Batman. While they weren't exactly the same, while they definitely had different motives and different styles, they were cut from the same shadow. While most of them had decided to follow Batman, Huntress was not one of them. She went off, she did her own thing, and that is because her and Bruce, they are so much alike that they simply could never work together. While they have on occasion, any extended period of time, they would just be butting heads over and over and over again. And this is why he is believing so much is suspicious at Arkham Tower. Believing that she has given up and that's something that she would never do. Now Batwoman lets him know she never said that she gave up. What she said is she was good, that she was fine, and she was finally getting some kind of quiet. She was getting some kind of help. And Nightwing also questions the fact that Batwoman came in there, was going to rescue her, and the Huntress did not take offense to that. To Nightwing, that seems a little out of character for Huntress, believing that she would have gotten a little upset, thinking that she even needed to be rescued because she is the freaking Huntress. And so, with Anna tearing this guy Mark's face apart, the party crasher meeting his demise, with the Huntress seeing this violent act, trying to close her eyes, trying to cover her ears, trying to block out all of the anger and all of the hatred, with nobody really understanding what the heck is going on. All they know is the patience, all of the patience, at the same moment, 
like a switch had been flipped. They all turn violent immediately. Now we have Nightwing, he's still really psychoanalyzing everything going on with Huntress. With them picking up one month ago, she continuously was seeing these visions. These visions of people doing violent acts against others. And this made her extremely violent herself, going after these people and just smashing their faces in because she doesn't want to see this violence anymore. Not really understanding why all of this is happening, why she is still seeing visions. With Hugh Vile being dead, really she's starting to lose her sanity because of all of this. But this is where she lets Nightwing know that she is leaving, that she has to get out of here, that she can't understand what is happening, and these visions in her mind, they are literally driving her mad. And picking up with her sitting in her bunk, this is where Dr. Ware comes into the room, gives her some medication, says sorry for all of the noise, there seemed to be some kind of accident right outside of her room. Little does she know that Dr. Tobias Ware, he is covering up the murder that Anna had just committed. The same murder that she saw with her own eyes. With her believing that this is nothing more than a vision or possibly even a bad dream, she takes this medication and she passes out. And with this information, Dr. Tobias Ware goes to the office of Dr. Ocean. The guy that has been in the shadows, the one working behind the scenes this entire time, having monitors of every single one of the patients, Dr. Ware is livid that he even gave up or stopped for one second. With Dr. Ocean believing that they had all been asleep and he had the opportunity to stop just for a second. Dr. Ware right now he's freaking out. He's freaking out because one of the patients just killed another. If people find out about this, there is a good chance that they won't get that $6 million. Not only that, he has party crashers breathing down their neck. And now we just killed one of the party crashers. So we are going to have even more to deal with. And you were messing up. But Dr. Ocean lets him know that he's struggling. That right now he is having difficulty holding up his end of the bargain. With Dr. Ware letting him know that they only need a couple of more days. If he can hold out just for a little bit longer. They can pull this con off and rip off Gotham City for millions of dollars. Now, picking up day 15 at 9 a.m., we have Nightwing getting some fake credentials and making his way inside of the facility, going in to talk to Huntress to try to figure out what is going on. And while he gets inside of this place, he overhears two individuals having a conversation. These individuals are talking about Mark, the party crasher, because Mark was one of their brothers. And now they want to make Dr. Tobias wear pay for that brother going missing. And taking us back two weeks with Nightwing, he has a conversation with Huntress. Her saying that she just can't deal with everything going on right now. Saying that she just needs to get out of here. Giving her the keys to apartment, making sure that everything is taken care of. He starts to think to himself, why did I let her walk into this tower? Did I actually believe that there was a possibility? And I think that has been the, the real underlining story here. Is everyone has been letting themselves believe that Arkham Tower is that symbol of hope. Everyone needs that hope right now, especially after Fear State. So they are allowing themselves to believe into this miracle, into believing the idea that we have finally found a way to help all of our criminals, to help all of our mentally ill. And then we have Nightwing coming too, and he is toe to toe with Mr. Freeze. And he simply says that Anna and Huntress, they are sleeping, that they are all fine. With him saying okay, pretending to be a janitor and just take the trash out. This makes Nightwing very skeptical. But recognizing that there is some blood on the ground, he grabs a sample of that and he gets out of there. Seeing that the Huntress was safe, seeing that she was secure sleeping in her bed, he is not worried about her just this minute, but he does want to get this blood analyzed and figure out who it belongs to. And so with Nightwing leaving the building, we pick up with Dr. Tobias Ware. On the phone with Dr. Chase Meridian, they are having a conversation. And Dr. Tobias, what he is trying to do is push the timeline up, get her to write her report for the mayor so he can get that check. 
while not trying to come off as desperate, saying that he just wants to expand the facility and start helping more people faster. This is when one of the party crashers comes into the room, wielding a gun, saying that this is for his brother. With a little bit of conversation between the two, we see the man with the gun. He says he feels good, smiles, walks out of the room without pulling the trigger, and Dr. Tobias Ware, he thanks Roger. AKA Psycho Pirate. Because Psycho Pirate has been the one behind this the entire time. He has been the one responsible of controlling every single one of these patients' emotions. He is the reason that all of this has worked. Him working with Dr. Tobias Ware, they are trying to pull off the biggest con making it look like all of these people are healthy and happy and recovering, when the truth is, they are just trying to get that $6 million check and make it out of here as fast as possible. And that's what takes us to issue 1051. Picking up many months ago, we have Psycho Pirate, he made his way into the country. Sneaking his way into the country, Psycho Pirate is on the run. Now, the last time we had seen Psycho Pirate, he had been under the thumb of Darkseid. After Justice League Incarnate had gone to Earth Omega and broken up that entire ordeal, Psycho Pirate is now free of Darkseid and he is trying to make his escape, trying to hide from Darkseid and Justice League Incarnate anybody who might be coming for him. And that is what led him to Mr. Tobias Ware, trying to let Tobias know that this is serious. That the people that are after him, they're not even necessarily people. And if they find him, he is screwed. But this is where Tobias, he brings up the idea that he has been planning. Asking if he can still do everything that he could do when they were kids. Asking if he can do this to more than one person for an extended amount of time. He says that he could do this. Though he won't be able to necessarily teleport, he should be able to control enough people to get whatever scheme he wants off going. The only thing is, he has to stay hidden. No one can know he is there. No one can know his name. No one can even see him for a second. And so Tobias is scheming to rip off this city for everything that he can. We have the Bat Family. They are currently discussing their next course of action. They know that the Party Crashers and Arkham Tower, they are somehow connected. Not really sure how this connection is made. What they need to do is find the HQ to everything that has been going on with the Party Crashers. What they don't know is that while they are hiding underground, so are the Party Crashers. With Dr. Ware meeting up with the Party Crashers, he is meeting up with them because he has run them short. With him shorting the Party Crashers and them believing that he might be selling to Penguin, that he is double crossing and selling to all parties. Dr. Tobias, he might be biting off so much more than he can actually chew. And after he leaves the party crashers, this is when he gets a phone call from Penguin saying that he was shorted on some of his order as well. And so it looks like Dr. Tobias, he is playing all sides, shorting everyone, hoping that he can bail with this $6 million before anybody is the wiser. But that is what's going to take us to Day 18 at Arkham Tower. With Siphon sitting down with Dr. Chase Meridian, Siphon is letting us know that the things he has been seeing in his head, they have been running like a movie as well. Now, we now know this is all because of Psycho Pirates. Many of our patients are seeing the same thing. And with this beginning to concern Dr. Meridian, she wants to talk to Dr. Ocean and Tobias about all of the medication that they have been giving the patients, believing that they might be getting too much medication because they have all been seeing kind of visions of movies and films. And so with Dr. Tobias Ware making his way back to Arkham Tower, this is where he finds Psycho Pirate underneath the table, surrounded by energy drinks and upper pills. This is all to keep him awake as long as possible controlling as many people as possible at the same time. With him only getting a break while everyone is asleep, right now Psycho Pirate feels like he is going mad. And Dr. Tobias Ware, he is beginning to unravel, letting Psycho Pirate know that they have no choice, that they are almost in the end game. They have a couple more days to wait, 
and if he can just hold out for a little bit longer, they will pull off the biggest con in Gotham history. And right now, the mayor is making his way inside the building, telling him that if he can hold out for the rest of the day while he does his checks, then we might be able to have the check written tomorrow. And so Psycho Pirate getting to his feet, using his powers and abilities. He is able to control everyone in this building, making it look like everyone is cured or being cured of their mental illnesses. With this working, the mayor says that he is going to sign off on the check, that they will get that $6 million tomorrow morning. That it actually worked and they just need a few more days to ensure everything goes smoothly. And that's what takes us to day 19. On day 19 is when Psycho Pirate, he is no longer able to stay awake. After taking all of this medication, after all of these energy drinks, nothing is able to keep him up and alert. And with him passing out right there in his chair, this is when all of our patients, they snap out of their days. They snap out of their dreaming, and they immediately start rioting. With Nightwing working as a janitor, he goes to investigate the alarms, only to find the entire place it is in a state of chaos. And as he is going to investigate, this is when Anna Avulsion comes up from behind him, grabs him by the throat, and says that she remembers exactly who he is. Meanwhile, in another part of the building, sitting down with Dr. Chase Meridian, we have the Huntress. The alarms start going off, she makes her way outside, telling the doctor she needs to stay where she is. This is when she goes out to meet Nero, with him remembering who he is, saying that he is the king. This is when he goes against the Huntress. With the Huntress just beating the crap out of Nero, this is just one criminal of 37. With Dr. Tobias making his way up to Dr. Ocean's office, this is where he sees Psycho Pirate on the ground, barely able to get to his feet. Dr. Ware grabbing his mask and throwing it onto his face, telling him that he needs to do it, he needs to stop all of this, and stop it right now. And in an instant, we see everyone, they fall to the ground, and they go to sleep. And with them in their slumber, he makes everybody forget. And that will take us to issue 1052, and the final issue for this video. And it shows us a long time ago. It picks us up with Dr. Meridian being held hostage. With her being held hostage, we have Batman who comes to her rescue. And ever since that day, their relationship was never the same. They remained close, they remained friends and allies, and now more than ever, Batman needs her allegiance, if nothing more, than to figure out what is going on at Arkham Tower. And Dr. Chase arriving to her office the morning of the riot, not knowing what was about to happen, she checked in like it was any other average day, getting her first appointment, who just so happens to be the Huntress. And as they sit down, have this conversation, this is when Psycho Pirate had fallen asleep. In his absence, everyone went crazy. With everything going haywire, the Huntress, she runs out of here, letting her know that she needs to call Dr. Fro. Let her know what is happening. Let her know that the place is on alert and the prisoners are no longer under control. With Dr. Meridian not really understanding why she needs to call this doctor, she goes ahead and she does it anyway. But also letting her know very quickly that it's possible none of this is going away. None of their violent tendencies are actually gone. And that these memories, they are being presented to them as movies. Something that they didn't actually do. Memories playing along inside of their head. Lying dormant, waiting for the opportunity for their personalities to truly rise up. Saying that she does not believe that anybody has actually been cured. And in this about 20 minute time frame, and in this 20 minute time frame, with all of the writing going on, Psycho Pirate, he comes to, he gets everyone under control, and he makes everyone forget exactly what had happened. Now, Dr. Ware, he lets Dr. Meridian know that this was nothing more than a gas leak, that people had hallucinated, they saw visions, 
and that is what caused everyone to have these violent tendencies. Using this as a temporary cover, she's not really sure if she believes it. Now, picking up in the cave, we have Oracle and Batwoman trying to figure out what happened to Nightwing. Because he had called, letting them know that something had happened. About six minutes later, he had called again, saying that he, he woke up with his ribs hurting, bruised up, beaten up, but not really sure of what had transpired. And not currently having any kind of information. This is when Batwoman goes to check her voicemail, and she has the voicemail from Dr. Meridian. And so as they discuss all of this information, as they discuss everything that the doctor had told them, this is when she gets another phone call from Dr. Meridian, and this phone call is apologizing, saying that she feels ashamed and embarrassed because it appears that it was nothing more than a gas leak. And though this conversation was very apologetic, it really didn't seem like it was actually Dr. Meridian. And that is because it wasn't. She was being manipulated by Psycho Pirate. Psycho Pirate manipulating her in the background under the orders of Dr. Ware. Psycho Pirate continues to make her feel shame, to make her feel embarrassment, to the point she is dang near sobbing and doesn't even want to come into work anymore. And so now all of our Batgirls, they are sitting down and they are breaking everything apart, trying to figure out what this all means. And what they get from all of this information is there has to be some kind of underground operation, believing maybe this has something to do with the party crashers. And if they can bring down the party crashers that they know are inside of Arkham Tower, this will give them a reason to go into this place and shut it down. Even if they can't prove that Dr. Ware's methods aren't actually working. And it doesn't take long for our Batgirls to find the HQ. And they come in here like a freaking wrecking ball. Coming in and making quick work of these guys, they find the drug that is known as Numb. This drug coming directly from Arkham Tower. And so now that they have the legitimate proof to actually shut down the tower. Now they just need to figure out what is actually going on inside the tower with all of our violent criminals. And picking up with the Huntress, she's trying to figure out what is happening because the last thing she remembers, she was in therapy. And she remembers something vaguely, almost like a movie, where she was fighting someone that called himself the King. Not really sure what is happening. Underneath her bed, written in blood, it says his hold is breaking. Now, while she might not remember anything that is going on right now, that might help her click her memory. And the next time Psycho Pirate loses his hold, she is going to know exactly what is going on here. But that will be the end of these issues. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Man, freaking seven issues later. I wasn't really sure what to think of this series. Wasn't really sure about this whole Arkham Tower idea. But finding out that it's one big con, the Psycho Pirate is behind it. We had hope just for that small little sliver of time that we might have actually found something to help people. But it was just too unbelievable to see people like Nero, Mr. Freeze, like Anna, all just on the up and up and they're good now. Completely just unbelievable. We knew that there had to be something just underneath the surface. And Psycho Pirate is the perfect person to use right now. With him on the run from Justice League Incarnate from Darkseid, he had to find some place to hide out. Heading back to good old Gotham City, he finds himself being hidden away by Dr. Tobias. They have definitely played out this story though. Like we just covered seven issues. That's something that they could have easily covered in probably five, maybe even four issues. They're really drawing out this story and releasing one comic a week. Man, it, it makes it so hard to keep up with this. You know, after this, we might try to keep up with issue after issue, but we might just do a bulk video until this story arc is over. Because while it's, well, it's kind of genuine, it's kind of fun, it's really just not that great either. I would really, I was really hoping that Detective Comics would be focused more on Batman not being in Gotham City. But what we are getting is more of a Batgirl story with Nightwing on the side, even though he's been in Bloodhaven in his own storyline. 
So while the continuity really isn't making sense, it's going to be interesting to see how the city reacts after we find out that Gotham Tower is just another ploy to screw over Gotham City. And could this be the final straw for the people of Gotham when it comes to removing the mayor from his seat of power? But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you have not yet, do me a favor. Hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.